Hey guys, Oliver and I here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode 5 of The Green Room. And in those of you guys that are new to this channel and this series, The Green Room is going to go back in time and we're going to look at some of my stock old vintage footage. And I'm going to share with you guys some of my insight, perspective, and some learning opportunities that I have vastly benefited from. The ones that are close to me have benefited from. And now that you guys uh, are tuning in to support my new channel, you guys can hopefully benefit from and apply some of these lessons learned to your own uh, trophy fishing adventures here in 2020. So let's, uh, let's set it up a little bit, huh? We are back in Southern California here. This is the same morning from episode four with the double digit triple trout fish. And on the boat here is my uh, good friend and colleague, Mr. Rafael Rossi, AKA New Moon Bite on the gram. Those of you guys that aren't familiar with this man, him and his pops, two of the, some of the fishiest dudes that have ever set foot in, in California as a whole. So uh, looking forward to sharing more stories uh, about this man and uh, hopefully his father in, in the future here on my channel. So this is uh, as the fog is starting to lift here. Uh, most people are aware of the tendency for your percentages to get just a bite. Uh, on a big bait to go up when you have low light. So that's usually first first light, last light, rain, clouds, and in this case, fog. Really uh, stretched that low light window early in that morning. And this is an interesting time because Rafael had come down to fish with me after I had started getting on a little bit of a roll. And what was interesting about this roll I was on was that the fishing changed every day and honestly it kind of changed every hour so if you were trying to chase what happened yesterday or even earlier in the day honestly you're you're pretty much too far behind and you'll see that through a lot of the footage uh, from this period of time here with all my buddies in the boat just because you're in the same spot trying to fish the same baits that you had seen me catching fish on the day prior oftentimes if you weren't flexible and willing to try something new like man you're already behind the curve and this is before like people really realized like this bite was going on so uh, it was almost like I was conditioning these fish all on my own by myself like on a daily basis it was it was kind of a trip but being able to stay flexible and open-minded and coming into each new day and really each new hour as the conditions change as you're gonna see as this video progresses the fog burns off it gets slick calm bluebird sky and I'm continually having to make adjustments and if you pay attention closely to uh, what Raphael's doing and what I'm doing, we touched on this a little bit in the other episode of The Green Room. I think that was episode one, where Raphael catches a, a really big fish on the depth slide swimmer. And in that slide swimmer, you can see, as he's doing here, he's really just using the reel to incorporate an S action or gliding action from his bait. And in some of this, in some of these sequences, Raphael is asking me like, "What are you doing?" Because he's watching me uh, not only pick out a backlash here, but uh, he's watching me experiment. And I'm really trying to push the limits of what these baits can do. And honestly, just going through the process of, of trial and error and seeing what they're capable of doing outside of their intended design. So. Most of the Japanese guys at the time, especially this early on in the in the glide bait era, uh, were pretty much utilizing only the reel to impart the swimming action into these baits. And as you can see from that positive hook set here, and uh, we'll talk about those mechanics in the future. 
but Sorry, I got, I got stuck watching the video. So if you pay attention to the two different techniques here, Raphael's now throwing a 9-inch gladiator as well. So we're both fishing the same bait, but look at how much... Look at how different we're both fishing the baits. I'm utilizing the rod to incorporate some more English into the bait. I'm pulling it, I'm stopping it, I'm figuring out a cadence and a rhythm that I like, and more importantly, that the fish want to respond to, and boom, there you go. This is fish number two, I think, for the day. And this is a pretty special day. Rafael actually had to leave and uh, make the long drive back up to Northern California on this day. But uh, after I dropped them off, I kept fishing. But I think I finished with like eight or nine fish for the day on the big bait, which is pretty special. Like That doesn't happen very often. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're kind of learning together. We, we learn from each other. And he's definitely paying attention to how I'm swimming this bait differently. These are all fundamental mechanics that honestly come from a lot of the jerkbait fishing I've been doing my entire life and really just scaled up. If you guys haven't already, uh, go watch my bass fishing fundamental seminar from the Chicagoland Fishing Show also on this channel. I'll leave uh, the link in the description below or you can click right up here. And as you see, the conditions are starting to change a little bit. We push offshore. Rafael is still utilizing that straight retrieve. And I'm continuing to experiment. I mean, this is really, really early in my glide bait fishing experience. So I'm just noticing that when I drop the rod tip, I'm pulling it a little bit harder. I'm actually getting the bait to swim in a little bit more exaggerated fashion from left to right. And on top of that, I may be accentuating that with a burst of speed for my reel. And this is when I was actually still swinging on hard bait fish. Don't really do that anymore. And you're going to see why I kind of uh, omit using the net sometimes, especially on these smaller fish. Like this bait was one of a kind, man. That, this particular lure had that hit factor. Like it got bit. <laughs> it, it definitely had that hit factor. Now pay attention here. What I find interesting is how quickly my man, Mr. Rossi here, makes an adjustment. Now pay attention. Pulling it all funny in the video. Oh, what's that? <laughs> That's not a straight retrieve. So I think that's a perfect example of being adaptable, right? And not being set in stone in the box that we create in our own minds. Because Raphael, is, he's, he's down 3-0 right now. And, and any serious fisherman, like, we're all pretty competitive at the end of the day, man. <laughs> and the numbers don't lie. It continues to get bit, continues to work. And, you know, there's just two boys just having fun, man. Just trying to figure out the puzzle. Piece in the puzzle. That's what this is all about. You know, and, and figuring it out on our own. Fishing is so cool. Just when you, you think you have something figured out or that you've, uh, you know, amassed so much info, like something when you always pops its head up. So this is uh, even later in the day. Now this is that mid-morning period. This is uh, after dropping off Raphael at the dock. And I was like, oh man, I kind of got a feeling, bro. Like, you should stay. Like, I don't want to have to send you these text messages later on today. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, oh, see that? Had another bite. And I swung. 
and that tends to happen a lot is when I was swinging on these hard bait bites I feel like I'm pulling the bait away from them and we'll go further into detail on that mechanic in future videos on other glide baits and other hard baits actually but getting back to this take a Take a notice of the conditions. It's interesting because people had notions that you there was no way I was catching these swim bait fish on these days. Days of no wind, bluebird skies, high sun. A lot of people had a preconceived notion that you can only get bit on a big bait in gloomy, stormy, overcast days. Now look at that. Did you guys see the difference in my hook set there? Or lack of? See how easily they pop off sometimes when they hit the boat. That's why you fumble with the net, man. It's I've lost a lot of fish just fumbling for the net. Gladiator, yay, yay! <laughs> that was a good fish. I was like an eight three or something. I think that was the second biggest of the day. But I was really starting to get into a groove with that bait. Really getting into a nice little zone. I could almost anticipate when I would get bit and that's when paying attention to the details like and the rhythm and the cadence just like fishing a jerk bait uh, you can almost call your shot or right, you can anticipate and visualize a fish engaging with the lure tracking it baits going left baits going right comes to a pause boom I should get a bite right now and this is kind of what was happening on this day <clears throat> I think that was what, fish number four for the day. And really I'm making multiple casts, trying different angles, fishing parallel to the brush line, throwing out deep, throwing into the brush line. Just always trying something new. It's so cool to look back on some of these days. Gosh, it's been a long time since I've had a bag like that. I've been real fortunate uh, to, to have a 40 plus pound limit uh, six different times I think and as as my experience level grows like the less the stats really seem to matter to me it's kind of like my basketball game right like when we were young adults and playing in adult leagues like everybody would rush to the website and, and like oh how many points did I have how many assists did I have how many rebounds it was all about the stats but now I just know like man you better get a hand up boy because I'm I'm about to get some buckets And this is kind of where I'm at now in my fishing career as well. And I've just learned to appreciate every single moment, every single success. And look at that. Ugh. On the pause, I watched that fish eat that bait. Made a little micro adjustment. I think my drag was loose for some reason. Nice smooth motion up and over the gunwale. Control the line, grab it with one hand, keep a little tension on it, kind of freezes oh God, those fish up. Smoking. Man, I was having a good time. Right this is a, another seven pound class fish. I want to say seven three or seven six, real short. Real fat, Brad. Look at the conditions, man. Dead calm. This is when guys are out there throwing weightless senkos and drop shotting, just hoping to scratch your bite. Yeah, just going out there with a different mindset was everything. Like I know, I knew what I wanted. I wanted the biggest fish in the lake. Like I was, I was deep on the hunt. Okay, look at all my rods. There's one, two, three, four, five, six rods. Not a single one had less than 25 pound line on it. Once again, experimenting with my retrieve, really starting to figure out like a sweet spot with that bait. Like it looked really good when I would hit it this way, hit it that way, throw a pause in there and the bait would kind of glide to a stop and suspend. And a lot of those bites are coming as that bait came to a stop, just like a big jerk bait. I learned to, to anticipate them through the fundamental fishing. And I love reading all the internet expert comments about like, oh man, what does this guy know? Oh, he's throwing a jerk bait, he's throwing a spinning rod. It's like all these dudes that didn't spend the time mastering fundamentals have severely limited themselves in properly executing on opportunities with the big bait. I'm just creeping along here, taking my time. I know this area to be a, a good area. I've caught a few fish from the same zone. So it was easy for me to, to really dedicate long, 
methodical, thoughtful casts. And that's one thing that's different in my, in my trophy fishing. You'll notice my pace is slowed way down. All my guys that I uh, fish with that compete at whatever level, they're always kind of uh, taken back by how slow I seem to be fishing. I gotta maximize my efficiency. You know, when I'm fishing for the biggest fish in this section of the lake, it could be any one cast that does it. So I'm not really looking for the most aggressive fish. I'm looking for the fish. And if it's sitting on that grass edge where that coot's sitting, or if it's off the edge, or if it wants it uphill, I've gotta try all those things. But I have to have confidence in my location that, that really lends me to, to dedicate the kind of time. That's where, I, man, it's so much nicer these days to have proper electronics. That live scope fit, uh, technology has really changed my game. It's allowed me to stay in a productive zone because I can verify that they're there without having to even catch them. I can see those fish out there. It gives me the confidence to really sit there and slow down and, and make a really good presentation to these fish. You see, back in these days, man, I, we didn't really have that. There's a real old school up and down, um, just sonar unit, and you really give me the depth maybe show me some cover on, on, on the structure that I'm fishing or an occasional fish, but really uh, it was very rudimentary. So unless I was actually catching the fish or seeing the fish, I really had no idea whether there was anything there or not. Bait way off shore, working it from that deeper edge. And I was really anticipating getting bit as that bait came off that first drop off or break. Cause that's how the last one came. We want to take all the information that we're gathering and hopefully they're uh, in the form of bites and fish and setting that up for the next cast and the next fish because regardless of what you're catching them on it's always been fascinating to me that these fish for the most part will be on a very similar wavelength or page and once you can figure out something that triggers a positive response for them you can duplicate it and one of the big triggers for duplicating that the positive reaction in this day was actually the cadence and the retrieve. And trust me, it's not always this. Uh, I've tried to uh, emulate that many, many times, but every bait is different, every bait is unique, and I've had plenty other gladiators that caught some fish, but dude, none of them swam like this one. So, and that goes for most handmade baits. So if you guys are lucky enough to have a bait that just flat out catches fish man treat that thing like gold and oh man look at that still swinging on these hard bait fish makes me cringe a little bit looking back on it now right, rod tip down you see me get to to one knee and this one's nice fish so i make the judgment call it's like all right it's hooked pretty good let me get the net and i'm oh, i should have just bounced it you're about to see why. Pay close attention. Oh, right there. That's fish number six for the day. Oh, no. Buzzkill. So, what happens with these nets, too, is you know, your hooks get into the net. Now they're anchored. We saw this a lot with the barramundi fishing. We got the violent head shake of these fish. And those hooks and hook oh, hangers man. are buried oh, in the man. net. It's a lot of stress on the baits. And that bait right there yeah. was a yes, no yes, mas. <sighs> oh yeah, nets are not always your friend. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, episode of The Green Room. Please subscribe to this new channel. Leave a comment below. It's kind of fun going back and, and sharing these moments with you guys and, and continuing to learn from watching myself both succeed and more importantly fail. Uh, experience is always the best teacher, man, but this is a pretty close second. So appreciate you guys. I'm Oliver Nye. Uh, make sure you guys are still staying tuned to the uh, Big Bass Streams channel. We've got uh, content uploading all 
all the time. Been a good start to uh, 2020 fishing wise. Just uploaded a short 360 video on uh, a nice fish from uh, late January. I'm anticipating a really good early spring spring season in 2020 across the nation, especially here on the West Coast. Uh, wishing you guys nothing but success, positive vibes. Appreciate you guys. Have fun out there. Hopefully I catch you guys in the water. I'm out. Peace.